Hello everybody, welcome to our latest webinar. Today we are going to show you a ServiceNow platform that has IT, payroll, and facilities from Palo Alto Networks. Just a couple of quick things before we get started. This is our agenda for today. I'll give you a quick introduction about who Cloves Inc. is, and I'll give you a quick introduction about our speaker today from Palo Alto Networks. And then we'll get into the webinar, followed by questions and answers at the end. There is a box in which you can type in your questions. I will read the questions out loud, and our speaker will answer them at the end of the demo. Cloves Inc. is a ServiceNow partner. We have been a partner since 2011. We are based in Santa Clara, California, but we have projects all over the United States, Australia, Europe, and Canada. We are a full ServiceNow shop and have over 100 customers. We, as a full service shop, do everything from ITSM to custom apps to PPM, demand, vendor, contract, GRC, the entire enterprise suite, and remote admin and support. We are currently looking for ServiceNow implementation specialists, so if you are interested or know of anyone who would be interested, please feel free to email me at lara at clovesinc.com. The email will be up at the end of the presentation. Our speaker today is from Palo Alto Networks. He is a ServiceNow developer and admin. He has over 15 years of experience in IT and six years of experience on the ServiceNow platform. Clovis Inc. helped Palo Alto Networks develop their ServiceNow platform, and Abdulia continues to work on the platform today. I'm going to hand over control of the presentation to Abdulia. Hello, everybody. Uh, yes, uh, so this is Abdullah uh, for fun. I'm, um, at, I've been at Palo Alto since uh, a year ago. So uh, I'm just going to go right into it. And so I'm going to show you what our portal for IT, payroll, and uh, facilities or workplace resources looks like. <laughs> So, uh, so about six months ago, when our uh, ITSM service service uh, management director joined, so we had a portal. Our IT portal looked like this. It was uh, nice looking, but it didn't fit our need because our user this was too much for our user. Uh, it's hard to uh, uh, to go there and open an incident on a request uh, because you don't know which one is which, right? So, and it doesn't, it didn't fit in one page. So, for user experience, this this was not working for us. So, so our IT uh, director and our new uh, process expert. Those guys wanted to build a simple uh, web portal for IT that very easy to use, friendly for uh, our end user to use, and it should be uh, straightforward. So, so that's what we did uh, here. I'm going to start with IT first. So now you can see this is our new archive portal. It's much cleaner. It fit in one page. And even a, my eight years old uh, boy can easily figure out. So we we came up with a, uh, we have a, a new process where we want to separate all ins, incident and, and request. And before everything was coming as an incident. 
right? Even a, a ticket that's user asking for something or a laptop and stuff like that. So, so we want to make it cl uh, clear in the portal. And if you have an issue, you can just click on report issue, and we have a uh, some uh, wording saying assistance if an IT issue you are having. So meaning if something is broken and it's very easy to comprehend, you can go there and create an incident. Okay. Uh, so request item and services. So that will allow our end user to ask for something if they need something, right? Like for example, ask for order a, a laptop or software or ask for any services uh, in IT that IT can provide. And also knowledge base. So straightforward, it's in your face, easy to find information that you need. And also, so on the right we have news and alert. And if you want a immediate assistance, uh, there is an IT phone number. And uh, if you want to send a suggestion about this portal, you can do that as well. So also on this on this IT page, so any any uh, log on user, like for example, is and user is me. In this case, so we create this um, this small table here where you can uh, where it sh show you all your tickets. It doesn't matter if it's an incident, uh, request fulfillment, or service request that you open. You have access to all all your tick you ever created, and this was pretty cool because it's it's very fast. Like for example, I can uh, I can show the last twenty ticket. I can uh, scroll down, and there is I can go to the next page and stuff like that. So as you can see, it showed me everything. Uh, I can sort by these different columns. It can show me the request, incident, and if I have anything else that are open, uh, order fulfillment request is there. So this was done with pretty much Jelly and, uh, and JavaScript, right? So we didn't want to use uh, the UI that ServiceNow gave us, because that was that was uh, it was going to take the performance was not there. Uh, if you want to show all the user ticket that we ever created, so I think this 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 worked well for us and for our end user. Okay. And here as a menu, it's the same same stuff. You can create an incident by reporting issue here, or you can go here and, and click on it. Same thing with a, a request item, knowledge base. And my corner, so my corner will show you uh, my open incident. In this guy, I have one, uh, 181. So this is our dev instance, so I didn't have I've done many, but doing testing, all that stuff. So, okay. And I have one request to approve, and I have my open request, my watch list item. That, I mean, I have somebody add me to watch list, and payroll cases, payroll and HR cases. I don't have any facilities, and this is our service request. Okay. Uh, report issue, again, very straightforward form. We want to keep it simple for the end user. Uh, we only ask information about their current location, who is affected based on the value of a peak. We can automatically raise this incident to a P3 or P4, right? Prefer metal contact is there. How can we help? And details and attachment. 
straightforward. We didn't want to uh, confuse the user with a bunch of category and subcategory that they have to pick because the end user, uh, we, we didn't want to force them to, to know IT term, like for example, exchange, pick if it's an exchange issue and stuff like that. So that's why we want to keep it simple for them so they can just uh, tell us what we need and in the back end, we have a level one service desk that will uh, work on those tickets and categorize them correctly. Okay. So that was for uh, reporting and incident. So for a request now, once the user click on request, so he can see uh, if you want to request a software, services, or hardware. Straightforward, easy to understand. We have some verbiage that, that tell them software product available. Uh, so to help them guide uh, with the guidance. And the software, so these are the software that we provide for end user. Uh, I mean, so those are software categories. So each of them, if I go, for example, Adobe, we provide a full suite of Adobe uh, product that uh, the user uh, can uh, choose from. So software, software requests, all the software requests will create a request fulfillment in the back end, right? Meaning a, re a requeue item and, and, and different tasks. And we have service now as well. So they can ask uh, for anything about service now if they want access, uh, resolver access, or uh, they want a specific reporting, stuff like that. We can just ask for anything about service now. So those that software category for you. Hardware, so we divide hardware into three different categories. We have our, our list of laptop that our end user can, can order. And so we have done a lot of work behind the scene on this one. Uh, if if I'm an end user, if I order this, it will check our asset, asset management application and service now, database table, and it will check to see if I have any existing assets, and it will check the warranty. If it's less than, than three years, and it will send a, a, a approval request to the user manager to approve, right? If it's, uh, if it's more than three years, that means the user is qualified for a new laptop, no approval is needed. It'll, go, it'll create a task and assign it to, to the service desk group. Okay, so we, we have put a lot of intelligence on this. Also, the pricing. We have three pricing for laptop because we have, we deploy laptop from three regions in the US for Northern America, uh, in Amsterdam for uh, all EMEA, and Singapore for all APAC. So those have different pricing. So if the user location is in Europe, it will show them uh, the correct price for the laptop and in the correct uh, currency. So a lot of work was done behind the scene to have this accomplished. Okay, and accessories, we have a bunch of accessories where our end user can, can order as well. 
so the, this is our dev instance. The picture has not been updated, but you know, production, we have the picture for each of these items, the match. All right. Next, knowledge base. So we have a lot of knowledge base. So we didn't want to list all of them, and 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 make it hard for end user to find uh, for any specific any specific thing they're looking for. So we just put a simple search entry where we can type anything we want to search. Like for example, type email. Uh, it'll, it will bring out a different uh, knowledge article related to uh, to what I type. Okay. So this is pretty much it for IT portal. Again, the back end. This will create an incident. This will create a order fulfillment request or a service request based on what type of services you choose. Uh, I believe I, I didn't cover services. So services we have access requests. So those three will create service request, and service request was a custom app we built. Uh, for anything that's on the incident and that's not a order fulfillment request like ordering software and hardware. Okay. So that's pretty much it for IT portal. Very simple, easy to use. Next is payroll. So payroll, they, they want to, uh, they, our payroll organization wanted to keep with uh, the old look and feel. Uh, so for them, that makes sense because as an end user, I, I have, I can, before we were getting a, a bunch of email uh, saying, okay, I need information about my W2 or my stock or my benefit. Uh, there's a error in a, pay, in a paycheck. So it was hard for our payroll department to handle it. So they came to us and with the help with uh, close again. So we developed this uh, portal for them and, and categorize everything. So it's, it's easy for the end user to choose which area they need help with. Okay, so all these are record producer. And in the back end, it will use, this use the HR case application that we uh, modify. And the HR case application we use are for HR and payroll. But our HR department currently doesn't have a, a portal yet. But they use the same application, but we, we did a lot of work to uh, separate uh, uh, the, the cases, what it looks like for payroll. We have a different numbering. And then HR, I start with HR, and then followed by seven digits. So again, these are uh, uh, record producer that will create uh, payroll cases in the back end. Okay, we also have uh, some knowledge document over here. You can search for it, but we have all this all this knowledge article available for end user. Okay, next, let's talk about 
workplace resources or facilities. Again, so those those guys want to uh, use the old look and feel that we have for IT and and uh, payroll department. So it work uh, it worked well for them. But there is no wrong or right in terms of uh, of UI, but basically you wanna you wanna choose a design that works well for you for your organization. So I think this works well for them. Again, everything is is there is categorized correctly. Where this tell you that it are all the services that our facilities department offers. And by the way, we have safety and security under facilities. So our security, uh, physical security department use uh, the facilities, they're under facilities, so they use the same portal. So as you can see here, we have stuff for facilities like ergonomics, furniture installation, and we have item for our safety and security. So this in the back end will create so we're using the facilities uh, request in the back end. And this is these are just the record producer that will create uh, uh, facilities uh, request in the back end. Okay. Going back. So again, they have, so the header, we have my corner in all three portals. Uh, so end user can see, easily access the open incident request, HR or facilities ticket in all three uh, portals. And the rest of the header is specific to, uh, to IT or facilities in this case, uh, that's pretty much it uh, for for the portal for these three departments IT, payroll and facilities so I think we can open up for questions of course. So if you guys have a question, just type it in the question box and I can read it out loud. Feel free to ask anything about the portal, about their experience making the portal, anything you might have questions about. Yeah, so yeah, basically, uh, the suggestion I, I have for uh, user of a company that uh, think about creating portal for IT and stuff like that is think about, they should think about the processes first instead of just creating a portal, uh, figure out what the process is, what we wanna do. So that's, that's what worked well for us. We want to set totally separate incident and over request. Um, I worked with other companies before where we use the incident application for service requests and incident, and that that was really bad. It's it's hard to do proper metrics reporting, and and v because we here we have SLA incident, and we want to totally separate request uh, and request fulfillment from incident. So they go to different applications in the backend. Okay, 
Uh, we have a question from Ron Eisenberg. He says, I see you are working with Palo Alto. Did you do anything regarding cybersecurity? Cybersecurity, yeah, so we we have an InfoSec team uh, that's very security minded. So they, are, they keep us, us on check, meaning IT, our IT, us IT guys. So we implemented a single sign on and also uh, we have a ping ID which allow you a second authentication uh, before you log into service now. Uh, so first you are SSO and then you are required to uh, to uh, authenticate through ping ID with your, your cell phone, right? That's the only way we allow our end user to log into service now. And we also have a lot of uh, security criteria of what we cannot do, what we can do in terms of uh, uh, like asset management, what's allowed, what field is allowed to show. Like for example, we're doing a, uh, we did the asset management for all our client assets, but for certain information, we are not allowed to put it in our portal. So that was a good question. Any other question, Lara? Yes. Um, he, as a follow-up to that, he wanted to know: Have you encrypted attachments? Have you encrypted? Okay. Uh, start from Geneva. So ServiceNow have, is coming up with edge encryption, where you can encrypt any field. But we are still Fuji. That functionality is not there, but that functionality there for for end user for user company who have upgraded to Geneva will have that capabilities to encrypt any field. But again, there is a caveat to that: if you encrypt uh, with edge encryption, you won't be able to search search that field, right? Um, what about specifically attachments, Abdulia? Not the fields, the attachments. Well, attachment, uh, we haven't done anything uh, to encrypt attachment in our end, and we haven't investigated that. And I don't, I'm not sure if that capability is even available in in Fuji yet. But I know Geneva, there is. But what we did is. We will not allow uh, certain type of attachment like zip or exe and stuff like that. We uh, we don't allow those to be attached to a ticket. Okay. Um, another question is: Have you thought about using ServiceNow's IT operations management? Uh, yes, yeah, so right now we are we are in talk with our infosec again to figure out what what is allowed uh, or what can we do or what we cannot do because we want to use service now to the fullest, but again, we are a security company, so we want to make sure we don't expose any of anything that's sensitive information. So we are, uh, I mentioned earlier, we did asset management for clients, uh, client system. So we're planning to do uh, CMDB and a proper uh, uh, you know, discovery with CMDB and also orchestration and automate some of our uh, uh, server infrastructure stuff. And also we are looking at looking at service watch as well. Okay, uh, another question was, did you create a new application for the IT services requests 
I do not see the order now UI on your form. So was it a record producer form? Yes. Uh, I'm not sure if I understand the question correctly, but yeah, we did create a new custom app called service request, which is different for the order fulfillment request, right? Because, and the reason is this. We we went live when we went live this portal. We only have incident and request for fulfillment. So it was it was a little bit hard for our resolver to easily open a, a request uh, fulfillment for everything. And not everything is a request fulfillment. Think about this. Uh, I'm not saying everything is wrong, but if I want to create a request to uh, create a new DL or something or increase the mailbox size. I know you can automate all that stuff. If you have it automated, I think it makes sense to put it in request fulfillment. But if it's not automated, trying to create a request to add to a new uh, DL, it's and going through order fulfillment is like a shopping cart didn't work well for us process wise that's why we want to create a service request application where our resolver IT guys can go and quickly create a service request the same way they create incident easily so we still have so we're using all we're using three application for ticketing incident service request request fulfillment and like i mentioned earlier request fulfillment will have stuff like ordering hardware and software and every every other type of request will be under service request but as soon as we start automating one by one we'll move them to the request fulfillment because as, as you guys know the request fulfillment have all this automation around it, around the workflow, and stuff like that. Okay, I have uh, two questions here. The first one is, we use an earlier version of ServiceNow. Can we still create a similar appearance as this is a very, this is very different from the out-of-the-box version? Oh, yeah. Uh, definitely, you, uh, you can because all these are custom stuff. Uh, I, a bunch of uh, JavaScript and Jelly, and so everything you see it here, it has been customized. Uh, we haven't even. It, it kind of looks like we're out of box a little bit, like those three sections, but it's totally different. But you know, you can. Uh, uh, there is a lot of tutorial. Uh, YouTube videos on CMS that allow you to uh, help you create uh, CMS space from scratch. Uh, it's it's not that bad. And this was this was a little bit tricky. Uh, this uh, this screen right here with my ticket. So I have like I said, we are using we are using some Jelly and some uh, JavaScript to get that information. But for for Helsinki release coming up in, in May, I believe, uh, the out of box portal is gonna be, re it's really nice. So probably you guys wanna wait, wait for that because they're moving away from uh, uh, Jelly and use, Angular JS, and a lot of stuff is taken care of you in the in the back end, so it should be easier and faster to create a portal, CMS pages, and, and they, uh, the the out of box CMS portal is is very nice. I mean, it's very customizable. 
And going off of that, um, they'd also like to know how much effort is it to create a version like that, excluding the time on the catalog themselves? Or at least uh, what was your experience? Yeah, so we work with close. I think we did this in pretty much uh, two to three weeks. So it was not about excluding the service catalog. The service catalog was a lot of work. But excluding that, I think the time, we spent more time trying to figure out what kind of logo we want to use <laughs> hmm. than do actual work. All right, I do not see any other questions. If you guys do have any questions, you can always email me. I'm going to quickly switch over so you guys can see. my screen and you can see my contact information this one right here so you can always check out our app store at closing.com slash portfolio dot html you can also contact me lara at lara at closing.com if you have any other additional questions from this presentation feel free to email me and we'll be sending out the recording of this presentation later this week for you to share with anybody who might not have been able to attend. So thank you everyone for attending our webinar today. We are doing this webinar series as a monthly webinar, so please keep a lookout for our April webinar coming up soon.